Hi, I'm Allison Watt, and uh, my business, Artwork, Art Play, brings uh, art to students. I have a YouTube channel, and uh, this is part of my series called Artists at Large. Today, I'm really happy to welcome Doria Moody, who is an artist who lives in Whistler, British Columbia. Welcome, Doria. Thanks, Allison. Um, and just a little background on Doria and I, we've known each other for a really long time. I actually rented the carriage house of her home in Vancouver when I was in my 20s. And she was a young mother, and then I became a young mother and kind of went our separate ways. And uh, they were the world's best landlords. <laughs> the carriage house makes it sound a little bit fancy. It was just a suite over the garage. <laughs> Oh, it was so romantic. I've <laughs> never, ever lived anywhere as romantic since. Uh, so um, we have, we are uh, social media friends, though, and we've kind of watched each other over the years evolve uh, our art practices. So um, I'm really happy to have Doria here today because there's a number of things I want to catch up on uh, through that process. And I think that um, her story is really inspiring. So um, we're going to look at some of your images, Doria, and, and we can see right now you're, you're sitting in front of one of your beautiful winter forest images. Uh, work in progress. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'm in my little condo up in the mountains in the interior of British Columbia, where I have started spending part of my winters. And so I want to talk to you about painting snow too, because I've become completely entranced with painting snow. But we're going to uh, look at some of your images and chat about them, and uh, then we'll um, resume our chat with each other. All right, so tell us about this piece, Doria. Uh, <laughs> that was my first ever acrylic painting using uh, my daughter's acrylic paints in, I think, 2007. Um, and I did it in a first workshop ever with Janice Robertson uh, up here in Whistler. I want everybody to remember 2007 because by the time we get to the end of these images, I think everyone's going to be very impressed at like what a fast track you've been on. Uh, in, <laughs> um, so yeah, and this is one of the beautiful tree species that grows on the coast of BC, the Arbutus. Right, so so charismatic, the Arbutus, right? And they're hard to paint. <laughs> yeah, it's a very different palette from the rest of the coastal forest because of all the reds. They always remind me of maybe an Australian species. Mm -hmm. So why do you find them hard to paint? Oh, that's a good question because I don't want to paint them too accurately. I want them to be more my impression of Arbutus. Of course, that one. At the very beginning, I was studiously copying my photo, <laughs> but uh, I still haven't got the handle on um, making them more my response to Arbutus rather than just painting the Arbutus. Yeah, that's a tough thing to, to break into abstraction, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Almost like a whole other conversation. <laughs> oh, and that one I just put in to encourage people uh, <laughs> because it's um, very, very beginning um, of my paintings, but I wanted to paint all the kids jumping off the rocks. <laughs> I love the shadows. <laughs> so fun. Yeah. 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 That's the artist's eye, right? A lot of people wouldn't think to put that in a painting, but it's a really, really interesting part of the composition. Well, I think I could improve on the composition quite a bit at this, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> that was a painting that I uh, did in another workshop with Suzanne Northcott, another FCA teacher who I admire tremendously. And um, that's one thing I wanted to mention to emerging artists that they do a lot of FCA workshops. The Federation, that... Federation of Canadian Artists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great resource. That's lovely. Is that a picture of your daughter or a granddaughter? No, it's our daughter. Um, this, I did that in about 2008, I think, um, at Crescent Beach from a photo that I took. Um, and it's quite large. It's well, 24 by 36 or 36 by 24, which is large for me at the time. 
She must treasure that. We treasure it. It's still oh, you have it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That was uh, after um, getting into the FCA with active membership. And that was the first time I exhibited anything um, in a gallery in 2011, I think. My brother came down on his bike to support me. <laughs> the painting behind is in Smuggler Cove. It's a great painting, what I can see of it. So which, what year was that? 2011. Wow, yeah. You must that have been working very hard to get to that, to that stage by in four oh, years. I was, as you say, um, it was an authentic obsession. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, I was working towards my 10,000 hours. Yeah. This was another wonderful FCA teacher in also 2011. I went to the FCA annual art event, I forget what it's called, on Gabriola, and Robert Ken was teaching there, and um, he was a great mentor then when he was alive. Yeah, he, he was a, a wonderful painter, and I hear he was a wonderful teacher. Also a brilliant man. I mean, you might have read some of his books. Yes. So my I have a group of artists that I'm very close with, and we all went um, on a trip with Robert Ken on the Columbia Three, which is an old, you probably know it, Allison, right? I've worked on it. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, one of my trips came came in um, just one or two sessions after you, and they were still cleaning acrylic off the deck. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were so careful. Oh, I know, but you know, they're very, very, very careful about the boat, very particular. And they were fine. It, it, they were good natured about it. They loved having the Robert Ginn workshops on board. The Campbell family. Yeah, they're yes. amazing. I've been back a couple of times to paint. And that was plein air experience, which is so invaluable. Yeah, it really is. Oh, th these are value studies that I recommend really highly to um, beginning artists, to any artists. Um, and if it'll work that way, then it'll probably work as a painting unless your colors are way off. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's something that I... I uh, repeat over and over again in my in my classes and my exercises and in my teaching and until I think my students get tired of hearing it. But you're well, right. Yeah, well, I got tired of hearing it too. But <laughs> I've come to realize how important it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're you're very smart to study with um, instructors because I think that creates a bit of a shortcut to some of these things. Like I didn't understand value for a long time because I'm uh, such a self learner, which has its advantages, but really has, its, uh, I think some disadvantages too, because you can learn things much more quickly if you can just, you know, transmit the knowledge from an experienced artist. Uh, and for some reason, value eluded me for a long time, but it's made a huge difference for me in my work. Hmm. These are charming. Are these uh, just little, like small panels or? Well, those are um, small wooden panels. Um, Jim, my husband made a whole bunch for me and I use them for studies. I've got Dairyland, a Dairyland box stuffed with them, um, but that's just divided up into, um, each, each panel is divided into four sections. Those are, um, nine by 12 or something like that or maybe 11 12 by 16 panels yeah you know um because I, I do a lot of value studies in my teaching I've actually come to really love working in monochrome mm -hmm. I, I I think they make really beautiful paintings often and I love doing them you know all finding all of the subtle values between you know the two endpoints of white white and black black it's a lot of fun I love it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, in about 2012, I started uh, painting some of the kids on the mountain. And uh, until 
until uh, some of the teachers said, you can't be here taking pictures of the children, <laughs> which was too bad because I never yeah. put their faces in, um, but they were worried about them being identified. But on the other hand, um, once these started to be in mountain galleries, uh, parents would walk by and say, hey, that's my kid. And they wanted to go and buy the painting. <laughs> right. So. There's so, it's such a wonderful subject because it's so bright and, and the shapes are so well defined and the negative shapes are so interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're really fun. They all tell little stories. That was an early bear painting, um, probably uh, 24 by 30 or something. Um, from it, it was actually from a photo that Mireille Campbell gave me, um, mm -hmm. the Campbell family. And mm -hmm. it was a good exercise in trying to do water and all those drops and lots of glazes was the mm -hmm. uh, yeah. for me. <clears throat> yeah, and here's all the values in here. The value study. That was another painting from 2012. Um, initially, I didn't, the value study helped on that because I didn't think I, initially I didn't have the area behind the trees dark enough. And so it kind of broke that all up, that dark area. Back in here. Yes. So yeah. it was too, it was too white. So you had too much light coming all the way through here, you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it didn't really work for me. <laughs> Do you ever photograph your work in progress and edit it into black and white? Do you find mm -hmm. that? Yeah, I find that really helpful too. These must be your painting gals. Yes, this is my, my these are my Woba sisters, uh, Whistler Out of Bounds artists. Um, when we were starting out, we, we all met at, at a workshop or something in 20, 2009. And uh, we're all from Whistler and we support each other tremendously. Um, each of them is success, successful in their their art development um, at different galleries. And so it's wonderful. It's really wonderful and important to yeah. push each other along and support each other. I love it. Yeah, you're very lucky. That's wonderful. Well, here's some more of your, uh, your winter paintings. Mm -hmm. That was, um, I think, my first show at Mountain Galleries. Uh, in 2014, I think, um, mm -hmm. and it was so exciting to be. Yeah, <laughs> to be I mean that that's a really good gallery to to be in there is a, a great honor to be. Oh showing yeah, you. I was so thrilled. I just um, went in one day and happened to meet the owner who was from Jasper. It just it was all serendipitous, and she said, "Sure, we'll give you a try." <laughs> And it's nice because it's a local gallery for you too, right? So mm -hmm. Yeah, when nice. um, when my paintings are too big, I can actually walk them over. <laughs> That's <With great>. a... <laughs> So this is probably one of your first bear heads then, hey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Uh, it is, and it wasn't very big. We're going to see a, an evolution of those as we go through here. I love that painting on the ice. Um, I think it went up to Jasper. Oh, Which and then another. That? Let's go back to that one. This one here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that must have been fun and challenging to do the ice. It was. Yeah, it's a bit like uh, snow, right? And like mm -hmm. different colors, and it can't be all flat. Right. You have to get out all your blues and do lots of glazing. Yeah. Yeah. Very fun. And the colorful people. So another interest of mine since, um, since I ever started drawing is faces. And um, we were in London 10 years ago or five years ago. And I loved this show of Lucienne Freud's, very inspiring. And mm -hmm. so I tried a few faces when I got home of people that I admired. One of them being Michael Audain, who um, built the Audain Art Museum. Actually, that's when it was under construction. Um, and it was a photo from a inspired by a photo that I'd taken of him. Um, and then he also started the Grizzly Bear Foundation. So he's a huge, hugely important person in British Columbia, in Canada, and um, in 
our lives for having built the Audain Art Museum and having started the Grizzly Bear Foundation. Yeah, the Audain Art Museum is extraordinary. Whistler is so lucky to have it. It's really That's a for fantastic sure. spot. Mm -hmm. And we'll hear more about the Grizzly Foundation too, but the wonderful portrait. Is it in acrylic or oil? It's acrylic. Have I, you been tempted to work in oil? I have oils and I have worked in oils and I love the look, but even with um, odorless everything, I get headaches, so. Uh, yeah, it's true for a lot of artists. Yeah. Well, and it's a, it's a great portrait. Really, really well done. Thank you. Oh, and this is another, I've, I've really been blessed to meet such wonderful people. Um, some people might recognize the back of this man's head as Gordon Smith, looking at his painting as it was being unveiled at um, Equinox in 2014. Since it was going to London, to Canada House in Trafalgar Square, it was going to be a new painting at the entrance. And we went to this uh, unveiling and I met Gordon and he's the most charming man and so kind. He would not say that, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said he was a grand, a grand old man of the painting scene. He taught and painted in BC for well, he he died in his nineties, right? No, he was he was a hundred. He was just about a hundred and one. Wow, I remember hearing interviews with him when he was in his nineties and painting every day. Mm -hmm. and there he is. So he invited me to come and visit, and I showed him um, a small painting. Um, and he's, well, that actually isn't a bear, but I did show him a small bear as well. And he said, oh, well, you have to paint these large. He said, I'm going to get uh, my helpers to stretch a canvas for you. And he gave me a four by four canvas and said, bring it back when you've got something to show, <laughs> which I did. Um, and uh, we've kept that because it means so much to me, that first bear it's up in our house and he was very encouraging and I painted them large ever since with a few exceptions yeah I'd like to talk some more about that let's finish looking at the pictures of Gordon Smith that was another time yeah. bringing a few more in um, for a year or two I would see him maybe every six weeks or so it was wonderful <clears throat> yeah what a what a, a great friendship so mm -hmm. um, tell us about your attraction to painting the bears, your connection to that subject. Well, as I said, I've always loved faces and um, <laughs> <laughs> I find the bear faces are intriguing. Uh, I think they're very intelligent. They have personalities and uh, it seems a fit. Uh, we went on a trip with um, Michael Audain and uh, sat on a log and waited for bears to come by because you're not allowed to just go wandering. And uh, well, this bear was actually in the water, but um, some of the others, I think, um, might show bears walking by. They came quite close to us. And the guide would just kind of raise his head a little bit and Bear would carry on. There was a mum with three cubs that was very close and she was more interested in going to the river and teaching her cubs to float down the river and catch salmon. They yeah. looked like they were tubing. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, so this is in British Columbia's Great Bear Rainforest. Yes. Yes, where the big rivers come uh, flowing out of the coast mountains, and there's there's there were tr traditionally historically fantastic salmon runs. There's there's still watersheds that are intact and with salmon runs, um, less than there was originally, but great spots for bear viewing. And, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, this was sorry, it wasn't a big river, um, but yes. <laughs> now those well they're oh the purpose of this the reason I put this slide up is to show that you have to do things that scare you 
and painting uh, in the lobby of the Fairmont um, at Whistler was intimidating, but people were so supportive and interested that I had a great time and I've done it every spring break until COVID. Yeah, good for you, Doria. That, that can be really unnerving to paint in public. Uh, but it's such a gift to the public because people just really connect with that, especially kids, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I often, um, well, not on those two, but on some other ones, I've given them the brush and I've mixed a color and said, just make some marks. Oh, great. It, it's, they just are so intimidated to begin with, but then they they have a lot of fun and it gives me some unusual marks to work with. Yeah, fabulous. Well, this was uh, 2018, I think. Um, I donate a painting every year to the Audain Art Museum's big fundraiser. And to have Fred Lee up there talking about my painting and the guys with the white gloves um, from Heffel, it was fantastic. And, and Fred Lee got everybody so excited that it went for more than double its value or retail value, I'm yeah. sure the value priceless but <laughs> yeah yeah no, Fred Lee's kind of a, a local um uh fantastic radio personality and like full of life and, and that's I, I, I've never actually seen what he looks like because he's on the radio right but uh, so that's kind of fun for me to see what he looks like but you know the bears the faces that you paint they re you really do convey how each bear is different and the eyes are so beautiful and so full of, so full of light and Oh, thanks. Thank you. I, I feel that way um, about them and I really try to convey it. That black and white one, sorry, I was trying to go back here. Yeah, I, I was um, experimenting, as you say, with more monochrome and trying to be a little sloppier in my painting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was that bear. And how did you feel about that? Is that something you enjoyed? I loved it. Yeah. yeah did love it. And um, somebody else loved it too. <laughs> Good. It's in a house nearby actually. Near where? It's a, in a house in our neighborhood. So oh, that's nice. You can see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I love all this loose work and it contrasts so well with the, with the details of the, the eye really comes in here to all that detail, right? It's, it's nice, really beautiful. Well, the, this painting was, as people might guess, a response to what was going on in Ukraine. And um, I, I am very interested in politics and justice and um, women's rights and all that. And so I've often wondered about painting something that was a little more political. This one just evolved into being political. It was going to be a bear just in the water. And the news was just making me cry. Mm -hmm. so yeah. That's what happened. So and this was a fundraiser. I, yeah. It, well, it didn't start out to be, but I took it to Mountain Galleries and we together decided to sell it uh, and give all the money to uh, Doctors Without Borders in Ukraine which we did. Fabulous. So this one is obviously a bear with a sockeye salmon. Yes. <laughs> um, I uh, don donated a painting to John Marriott's uh, Exposed Wildlife Conservancy cause, and he gave me um, the right to pick some of his photos to use as inspiration for paintings. So that was one. What is exposed, what, is, what does that mean, Exposed Wildlife Foundation? Exposed Wildlife Conservancy. Well, Jean, are you familiar with John Marriott? He's a fantastic, uh, hugely popular, uh, he's got a massive following, uh, wildlife photographer and wildlife mm. advocate. And mm. so Exposed Wildlife Conservancy is kind of akin to the Grizzly Bear Foundation, but it, mm. it it's based in Alberta mm -hmm. and um, he is also supporting wolves and all, all kinds of cougars, lynx. So by exposed, he means exposed to human, uh, to human predation or it's loss of habitat, loss of habitat. I haven't actually asked him how that name came to, 
Well, he's a photographer, so it's kind of a play Mm -hmm. on, okay, okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's kind of a clever play on words. He's very, very good. Yeah, I'll I'll put a link, I'll put a link in uh, under, and also to the Grizzly Bear Foundation, too. Oh, great. And the Ordain Museum. Great. Thank you. Great. And this is a painting um, 60 by 84 that I did a few months ago. And the one behind me um, is similar. Some people wanted that scene, but in a slightly different shape. And so I'm doing another painting similar to that. It's funny, I have a, a, a study photo that I took that's almost exactly the same with the ski tracks winding, you know, the kind of S-curve composition. The, but the light is so different. That's such soft coastal light. And the, the, in the photograph that I took up here in the Okanagan, it's so sunny and all the shadows are harsh and blue, which is also beautiful. That's but, fun too. But I remember when I was um, with Gordon Smith, we went out taking pictures once and he said, the best light is when it's overcast. Uh, and they're, f- for him anyway. Yeah, so, well, I mean, unless you really want the shadows to be part of your composition. And I suppose mm-hmm. there's a kind of saturation in the colors when it's overcast, because there's less glare. And that's mm-hmm. interesting. I'm going to think about that. Anyway, <laughs> this is this is beautiful. It's really just feels so uh, so real, so present, without being super realistic. You can yeah. kind of feel the weight of the snow. And to me, when I look at it, I feel the kind of uh, moisture in the air of the coast. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I sure don't want it to look like a photograph. I would. Um, the odd time someone says, "Oh, it." just looks like a photo and my heart sinks but I mean they mean it as a compliment yeah right no to <laughs> me this does not look like a photo Good. <laughs> and this is here because it's what you're I think your most recent painting right mm-hmm. yeah that's um a bear that isn't inspired by any photo I just decided to see if I could make it up and um um, draw it freehand and so that was a fun evolution for me well you probably know these faces so well you don't actually need a photo now yeah but it, it's it's sort of like Dumbo and the <laughs> and whatever Dumbo had a uh, feather <laughs> um, right. I, I often feel I need a photo to look at because when you don't have anything to look at it's it's hard yeah, you know, one of the things that I've I've um, sort of realized through my teaching is that um, people can remember more than they, I mean, we can, I think we can really remember more visually than we think we can. Sometimes when I'm working with students, I'll take the photos away, so that they're not too over, over wedded, you know, to the photo image, because the painting is not a photo, it's something new, something different, and has a different set of needs, right? And mm-hmm. so, and it's so interesting how much people still have have in their minds. So mm-hmm. it takes it took uh, a while for me to realize that and to trust it too. Did you read that John Carlson landscape book? Famous, famous old book. Um, no, from many years ago, and he talks about the importance of painting landscapes from memory. I'm going to write that down. John Carlson. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also what what I love to do is to actually sketch on plein air, like, like you said, just spend some time in the environment so that you kind of absorb the light, the colors. And, you know, I usually do take photos as well, but I try not to work from them too much. Oh, good for you. I want to evolve to that. <laughs> or drawing and color color samples in my sketchbook and less wedded to photography, as you say. Have you seen the um, the E.J. Hughes sketches that he made in the field? Many years ago, yes. They're so elaborate. They're, they're, I actually like them almost better than some of his paintings. They're sketches and some of them are quite big. And then 
just elaborate, elaborate color swatches all through the painting with little notes in pencil to remind himself when he got back to the studio. Just wonderful. Okay, I'm going to stop the share and then we're going to have a little chat. Thanks, Doria. That was a, a great um, journey through the years and through your, your work. And I think everybody will probably agree that that's been a pretty fast evolution from beginner painting to really master painter. Well, <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that, but um, continuing to work towards it. Yeah. Well, that is true with being an artist. It is, you never really, you never arrive. There's always more to learn. And that's the wonderful thing about it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a great, and this is what I'm always telling my students because many feel uh, frustrated that they've perhaps come to painting too late, right? They've been busy with careers and children and families and, um, but I think that it's a great thing to take on later in life too, because it's it's endless and and you know if you really concentrate, you can make really big strides. And I think you're a great example of how to do it right. You know, like get some instruction, but have a disciplined studio practice. Have a group of friends that you can paint with that are really supportive. It's a great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to have uh, some, I want to ask you some questions. I've got them written down here, even though I know them by heart. But, um, and some of them we've already talked about, like, it's quite, quite clear what your path to becoming an artist was. Um, and one of my questions is always, was there a person or an event that was really important in your, you know, your evolution as an artist? Well, clearly, Robert Ginn and Gordon Smith were very important. And Audain. What is uh, Mr. Audain's first name? Michael. Michael Audain, right. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any anything more that you would like to well, say about that? Um, I would add my, my Wolba group, my group right. of friends that is hugely important. I don't, I wouldn't have been anywhere nearly as um, dedicated or modestly successful without them. And um, another instructor that I've had a workshop with for 10 years and now, um, every year for 10 years, is Brian Adio, who's an Eastern artist who comes out now to Whistler once a year and does workshops for uh, beginner, intermediate and advanced in the month of September. How do you spell his last name? A-T-Y-E-O. He does his workshops at my friend Susie Cipolla's um, up in Pemberton Meadows. Mm, if, nice. if anybody's interested, it's through Susie. Okay, I will put that, I'll put uh, him in the links too. Um, is there something that you haven't done yet, some uh, new material, subject, uh, ambition that you have? Uh, well, I think I'd like to do more large people portraits. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure. Um, and with my interest in politics, I might get more political. I don't know. Uh, also, I would love to have something that is real museum quality. Mm -hmm. okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, with a political, how would you envision doing that? Because I always feel political work is, it's a, it's a funny um, line to walk, right? Um, oh, it is. That's yeah. why I have, but I, I loved, we, we also saw a show of Georges Brock, Brock mm -hmm. and his, his political paintings during World War II, and they're just stunning. Um, so I, I haven't figured out how I would do it. Yeah, and the German Expressionist, the World War I painting, mm -hmm. just so incredible, incredibly powerful. Well, I'll, I'll be interested to hear how, you know, how that, if that becomes a, one of the parts of your path, because I'm, I'm always, I'm, yeah, that is a question I'm, I often think about. How do you paint politically or engage with, with political ideas as an artist, but you know, I guess, I guess it's got to be authentic, right? I think that's the main. Oh, thing. yeah. 
thing about it, any any art has to be authentic. If it comes from an authentic place, then that's going to work. But and if it's not commercial, just or yeah. prescribed, prescribed yeah. in some, in some way, you know. Um, yeah, that's again a longer conversation. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and I'm sure you will reach that museum. I mean, I think some of your paintings are already are already museum quality, but whatever it has you have in your mind, I have a feeling. I have a, a feeling you're probably you'll probably get there, Doria. Uh, <laughs> finally, uh, not finally, but uh, um, second to last question: What is your perfect day? Oh, I wondered about that. Um, uh, well, it would be sunny for one. <laughs> my photos another time. It's been so rainy here at Whistler. Yeah. Uh, so it would be maybe a morning cross-country ski and an afternoon of painting. with, um, And then my husband makes dinner. Wow. That sounds like a pretty perfect day in, in my yeah. world, too. Great support. Please say hello to your husband for me. I will. Yeah. Um, and finally, do you have any advice to um, people who are just starting to learn to paint or, you know, along, along their journey as a painter? Well, I made a little list because I was thinking about that. <laughs> uh, courses from the FCA or uh, similar, the, the Federation of Canadian Artists, but for people elsewhere, there must be some great courses with, by local artists. Mm -hmm. I've taken maybe 30 or more workshops of varying lengths and it's so invaluable. Another one is quality supplies. Don't start with um, paints, don't have good pigment in them. Mm -hmm. And then uh, use more paint. Often you just put down a tiny bit of paint when, when it costs so much. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> um, value studies. And work, even if you're not inspired, as Robert Genn used to say, go to your room and just start fooling around and you'll get interested. Um, and it, another thing that we did as when we were starting out our Wola group um, is we would do, we had a whole bunch of cheap panels and we would do, everybody would use the same photograph for inspiration and we'd do uh, 10 or 15 minutes on small panels and then we'd all compare notes. And we did hundreds of those. It was great. That's a great idea. Because you can learn from each other. Yeah. In some way. We, so it's, it's almost we, like amp, amplifying the learning experience. Mm -hmm. We do group critiques. And uh, it's, it's fabulous. We have such different styles, the four of us. So it was great. Um, and then the last thing, I guess, is to try and be fearless. So often and I've fallen into it too, make a little mark and you think, oh no, that's a mistake. <laughs> Instead of just realizing, leave it and, um, and then do something about it later, maybe it'll be useful. That is a really great piece of advice. Yeah, I, when I'm in that kind of place, I, I like to practice something called creative destruction. Mm -hmm. Where you just take a bold move and just change change it all up. Sometimes it works really well and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I just lose stuff and have to do it again or in a different way. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great piece. Of, all of those are great pieces of advice. So, That's one that Brian Adio said, uh, if you're going to make a change, make it, make it big. So yeah. Yeah. that's what you and be fearless. You, you know, yeah. it is funny how much fear mm. there can be around art. I mean, people write books about this, you know, like the fear in art. And I mean, sometimes it can feel like I mean, you're probably a really great skier. I'm not a really great skier, but it almost feels like I'm standing on the top of a double black diamond ski run. <laughs> I usually just maybe ski single black diamonds on a good day. But, and it's funny, you know, I think about that a lot because of course I encounter it a lot in my students. And so, you know, trying to talk them through that. Um, and I still don't know if I have the answer, but I know that it's there and that's what keeps us from sometimes making the bold moves that we need to make. And um, I like to frame it for my students that that's where we really learn, you know, when we make mm -hmm. those big bold moves. And if we don't make those big moves, right, we won't, we'll be too careful. And then we just slow down or restrict our learning potential. So. Well, it's a bit like skiing. If you, if you never fall, then you're not pushing yourself, right? Yeah. 
Exactly. I think I'm better at falling as a painter than a skier. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, Daria, thank you so much for uh, giving us your time today. And um, good luck. I loved it. Yeah. And uh, maybe I'll I'll see you uh, the next time I'm in Whistler and you can take me on a little tour through the Odeon Museum. I will. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Take care and uh, have a continued painting. Bye-bye.